largest contributor to financing Africa today. It's not who most people would think. It's not foreign direct investment, certainly not foreign aid. The biggest financial contributor, it's Africa's own diaspora, the millions of Africans living outside of the continent. Like many immigrant groups, they send funds home. But what's new is they are becoming an important investment block, investing in the future of the continent. Hello, I'm Carol Pino. Welcome to our show, Africa USA Now, current events at the intersection of Africa and the United States. Our program is presented by the World Trade Center, Washington, D.C., and supported by the African Development Bank and the Africa Investment Forum. The power of Africa's diaspora is undeniable. They are the most educated immigrant group in America. They're often well-connected to each other and remain strongly connected to their countries of origin. The remittances they send back have been essential for Africa. But these funds tend to go to family and friends, or perhaps development projects in a country of origin. Today, African diaspora are increasingly putting their economic might towards investment that benefits the entire continent and creates lasting development. Countries are also marketing diaspora bonds, promoting their fast-growing stock markets and mutual funds, and transformative projects that need financing. Here's Akin Wumi Adesena, president of the African Development Bank, at a recent conference on engaging African diaspora. Let all of Africa's diaspora, sons, daughters, regardless of the place of birth or location of migration, willingly or unwillingly, flow back to Africa and invest in Africa. Rise with unison for the great awakening of Africa. Let's go to our guests. John Olajide, CEO of Access and Vice Chair of the Corporate Council on Africa. Kevin Aroma, Vice President and Chief Economist at the African Development Bank. And Almaz Nagash, Founder and Executive Director of the African Diaspora Network. Welcome everyone. Thank you so much for being with us. Kevin, give us a lay of the land. Just how important is diaspora investment for the continent? The African diaspora has become a very huge source of financing for Africa's development. African diaspora remittances in 2021 rose to a mark of 95.6 billion US dollars. But what is more important is that the diasporans are now going beyond remittances, which traditionally go to families for schooling, for health, for feeding, for education and other things, but also direct investments into different sectors of economic growth in Africa, in energy, in agriculture, in health, in housing, in roads and infrastructure, and in many areas. And if only we can find platforms that will securitize remittances to add to these investment flows that's coming to the, to the continent, African people and our people of African de- uh, descent living outside of Africa has become a huge source of development financing in Africa, in all sorts of investments that you think about. And the most important part of it that the financial flows from the diaspora has proven to be resilient and very stable. As the president of of the African Development Bank says, as those rivers that flow out of Africa is now flowing back into Africa. John, you are invested widely throughout the continent. Tell us about the things that you're invested in. You've heard me share with you privately that I consider myself 100% African and 100% American. And I am passionate about economic development. My group of companies are invested widely across the continent. One of our companies, the Cavista Technology Solutions, currently employs the largest number of software engineers in Nigeria and in the agriculture sector, hospitality, Um, payment technology, because I can help break down barriers to commerce on the African continent, and then also supporting lots of other entrepreneurs through our investments on the venture side and the growth and private equity side as well. There are three reasons why we're invested. The first one is jobs. The second one is jobs. And the third one is even more jobs. So the three reasons are jobs, jobs, jobs. Those are my three reasons for investing in the, on the African continent. I've done lots of philanthropic work 
on the continent, you know, um, helping with uh, resources, financial resources and all types of things, medical missions, medical interventions and all that. And I have a, my dad is retired in our country home in Akita State in Nigeria. At some point, you know, I got thinking this is not sustainable. And, you know, that part of the country is really endowed from a, an agro perspective. And I joke around that if you throw orange seeds on the ground and go back a few days later, you see something sprouting out of the ground. And we thought, why don't we leverage something that's abundantly available there, which is the agricultural wealth to create economic success for those communities. We didn't want to do just um, small projects. We wanted to do massive commercial um, projects. And my vision was to employ as many people as possible. And we have massive farms, commercial farms now that are growing and doing well, employing thousands of people across the agricultural sector. That is amazing. So Almas, you have just come off a very successful summit, the African Diaspora Investment Summit. Tell us about what happened during the summit. So what we've done is we cultivated this passion and created this ecosystem that enables these young and uh, older and in the middle kind of diasporans and friends of Africa to come to Silicon Valley to network. And Kevin was a part of it, so he can attest to it. They were the most brilliant and, uh, and in fact, they made me cry at the end because they are incredible. These are young Africans wanting to find opportunity. And so the, the question that comes to us all the time is, what can you do? What can we do? And I think, I think we kind of figured this out because if John is investing and he's taking a chance with his own money, and so are many others, how do we create the system? in which diasporans can invest in countries, regardless of where they come from. Just because I'm an Eritrean, do I have to really invest only in Eritrean? No, I want to invest everywhere where I can get my money back. So that's all. There's a lot of interest in African diaspora engagement in the continent as a whole, but I don't think that's enough. I think we must create a system policy-wide in the US and in the continent from our leaders they need to really step back and think about what are we going to do to engage our diaspora so that they can tap into the 55 billion plus savings that we have. So we can take this money and invest it in the continent. I say this because that's exactly how the Indians have done it, how the uh, Irish uh, diasporans have done it. And the question is, how do we tap it? And then, John, how do I come to you and really get these amazing entrepreneurs for you to meet them? and to be able to invest. So, John, as you're listening to this, are you getting new investment ideas? Always, always. I can't help myself. As I've invested more in the African continent, my only regret about investing in Africa is that I should have done it a lot sooner and it went a lot bigger. I should have done this at bigger, bigger scale a lot sooner. That's my only regret. How long ago did you start? I've been doing that now for a few years, but I should have been doing that alongside everything I've done in other parts of the world is what I'm saying. I should have been doing that concurrently. So Kevin is right. I couldn't imagine a better place to invest. It's a place that's incredibly underserved, lots of opportunities to do things, a young, vibrant population, very talented. And I'm thinking I should have been doing this a long time ago. You know, see, when people say challenges, I see opportunities. So I, I know I should have done this a long time ago. Kevin, we heard earlier the clip from President Adesina at the convening you recently had on focusing on the diaspora. And it's interesting because you really looked at how to support that investment. Tell us what you're doing. The African Development Bank and other uh, agencies on the continent can create instruments to help securitize these remittances. 95.6 billion US dollars we talk about and many more, maybe by times 10, that are unrecorded, so that it can also go to investable funds. That will help to drive growth, drive investments, and drive returns to the, uh, to the, the, uh, the person who is remitting on the other end. We know that if the remittances are securitized, it will more than quadruple the recorded number we have. So, and, and that is one area that we're really keen on but also developing instruments for diaspora bonds that allows uh, investors from the diaspora, people of African uh, uh, origin living outside of the continent to have specialized instruments that allows them to invest at very reduced risks because with bonds 
and other things, then you find that the involvement, um, like having to come and to create the roads and identify the investments and so on, is taking off the investor. Because the African Development Bank, the countries and so on, can then invest that resource and be able to create uh, a healthy rate of return for, for the investors um, as well uh, as go going forward. We have seen in Pakistan, in Israel, in India, and also in Nigeria, in Kenya, how these diaspora bonds helps countries to mobilize resources for development. So we're also working with other partners to try and create instruments to scale the issuances of diaspora bonds that can help crowdsource investments for Africa's development needs by Africans and people of African descent. You know, Alma, the, the thing that I keep seeing is how much tremendous passion there is. Uh, there is absolutely no shortage of it. How do you see this as a catalyst for Africa going forward? So, John, you spoke about investment. Do you know how hard it is to access funding for us uh, wherever we go? And I think, John, we have people like you everywhere. What we don't have is a system of trust, a system of building that relationship and start to figure out how do we get to take this to the next level? Not just passion and not just uh, interest. No, no, no. We need to bring it together. Otherwise, we will continue to be dependent on other people to do the work for us. But we also need to really reimagine what the diaspora can do. If we are supposed to be the sixth region, well, then create an investment system for us that we can actually do it ourselves. But we need an ecosystem that will enable me, if I want to go to Tanzania and I want to invest, I want to be able to do it as a diaspora, having that right. And then we can invest in our people, even their capacity, we can do it. Diaspora investment is different. It comes with on the ground knowledge and an understanding of the complexities. These are investors with a far better knowledge of the actual risks so they aren't going to be swayed by the narrative on perceived risks. And it's the patient capital that Africa needs. Like all investors, they're driven by financial goals, but also emotional pull and the aspirations for the continent. A good financial return is important, but equally important is a social return. How much an investment will contribute towards development in Africa. Diaspora investment can be a means to feel engaged and be part of building the continent and it creates investment ambassadors who can draw others in. John, when you're investing, what do you look for in terms of both the financial and social returns? What I look at on the African continent is no different from what I've looked at in America or the parts of the world where I invest. I look for opportunity. I look for areas that are underserved where I can bring capital and resources and expertise and all that to get a return on investment. Now, investing on the African continent is special because I am from there. So when we set up this forum, everything you need is not there, okay? There's no power there. You have to figure that out, you know? Even access to the farms is a challenge. A typical investor from other parts of the world, these are things that you don't have to worry about. You take these things for granted. When you're investing in different parts of Africa, you have to build all those things yourself. So it's um, challenging, but I love it. I'm like, well, these are very complex things to solve. Let's go solve it. Yes, I want to get a return on my investment. But more than that, I want to build, I want sustainable um, development of those um, societies. I want to make sure they're thriving, that they're doing better. And candidly, I would even sacrifice one or two points of a return on investment, right, to make sure it's a sustainable investment. No matter what investor you are, when your career is all said and done, you're thinking, what impact did I have? What legacy do I have in the short term to get there to make sure there's infrastructure to support your long-term success? Once you put all that infrastructure in place, that's done. For the longer your return on investment that just grows and grows and compounds better than anywhere you, you see in the world. John, you're not just only investing in Africa because you want to help Africa but well, because you are a very smart investor. And that's clear in your track record. You have what is called the in-between advantage. I've met a colleague from India who is making billions in Eastern Africa 
by just doing hand holding, using that in between advantage to do trade promotion. So for any diasporian, you t- you don't have to wait until you have too much capital to start dripping the benefits of the diaspora engagements on the continent. You can be that go between, an advantage to do trade promotion and investment promotion, identifying investment opportunities in Africa for Africans in the diaspora, but for other global investors as well. Let's use that opportunity and put the African diaspora in that place of being the connector that they really that they really are and we will be able to help move this agenda forward of developing Africa creating jobs alleviating poverty and creating a better place for the whole world you know elmas you work with so many people that are invested in Africa and i wonder if you can just give us a kaleidoscope of what you've seen of what they bring to the table in this. So, um, first of all, let me just say how inspiring it is. I, I think we are going to harness this and make everything possible, even if it's only a few countries in Africa, we must do it. So, uh, John and Kevin, thank you for your passion and commitment. We could do this. My background is international trade, so I actually am immersed into taking people into trade missions and trade shows and all of that. Diasporans can take that space. Do we have a diaspora trade mission, trade program? It is what John is talking about. So that way we, the diaspora, instead of just being the go-between or, you know, let's, no, 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 no. Let me take you with me to these facilities that John is investing in and see what he's doing. So then we become the example of what it looks like to invest. One of the things we haven't done is intentionally engage our historical diaspora who are part of the sixth region of the diaspora. And so what we did was in 2021, we started something called Accelerating Black Leadership and Entrepreneurship. That program is focused on diasporans and African-Americans. We are at the beginning of building that bridge. The bridge that exists building that bridge because we want to get our African-Americans who are capable, have the need and the interest and the will to invest in the continent. I think the, our opportunity to engage and to bring and to widen the pie to include not only African spikers, but I do believe also Africans by love, by connection, by proximity. And it's not going to just be hope. It's going to be real because we have people like John who are going to make this real. You know, we can talk about all the different opportunities on the African continent, but I don't want to just talk about it. I want to show people and show my friends, these are all the different sectors that I'm invested in. And regardless of the narratives that you're reading about, these are investments that are sizable investments and we're doing very well. These are the numbers. This is how much we're growing. And then say, come along with me. I'm having conversations with lots of, you know, big American companies. I'll invest alongside you and then help you share what we have learned, share our resources, share our networks so that you can get in there and be um, successful as well. So I know there, there's African capital, there are African resources that can help make things work. And as we think about how Africa relates to the world, for me, I want it to be more about trade, investments, partnerships, collaborations. Please do not talk to me about aid. You know, Africans can build Africa. Africans are capable of doing that. You can partner with Africans to get that done. And we can have conversations about trade and investments and partnerships and collaboration. That's win-win where the world benefits. Everyone wins. Diaspora investors, whether from Africa or elsewhere, bring more to the table than just finances. They also bring knowledge. They know their current country of residence and they know their country of origin. That unique knowledge and experience makes them ideal partners for businesses wanting to set up in Africa. And for businesses they invest in, they can bring technology and other knowledge back to Africa. They can also bring African innovations to the rest of the world. But Africa's diaspora have needs that must be addressed, whether through tax incentives to encourage investment or establishing government ministries of diaspora and allowing the right to vote in their countries of origin. 
How, Ms., how do you see that knowledge component? I always knew that our contribution is not just money, knowledge transfer, and many different things that we can do to not only focus on the brain drain, but on the brain circulation that happens so that we don't feel guilty for leaving the countries where we come from. Rather, we become more attuned to where we are on the return on investment. I'm talking about pure investment. Then there is the social investment which we could do through knowledge transfer and engagement of many different things that we can do to empower and to support these local entrepreneurs. We co-created uh, the Builders of Africa's Future. So identify business and social entrepreneurs in the continent. These entrepreneurs are the future of Africa. And so the idea was we would provide them training, which we did, and then uh, match them with mentors. And then we bring them to Silicon Valley to pitch their idea to potential funders. So that has been so important. And in the pipeline, we have almost 60 entrepreneurs. What we did was we partnered with the U.S. Africa Development Bank. The 11 entrepreneurs that we selected last year, each one of them received $25,000. Think about that. These are social entrepreneurs, business entrepreneurs. Here are the people that you can invest in. They have the capability. Boy, they have the tenacity and the will to advance. The diasporans have talent, they have time, and they have also have treasure. Now, the talent, uh, the talent that we have in terms of knowledge, technology savviness, and other things, experiences that are gained, can be shared with Africa to help develop Africa. So that's the social investment that Almaz was talking about. And again, we need to think about how to be able to turn the whole logic about brain drain to brain circulation. Today, in the digitized world, you don't need to be in Nigeria to give prescriptions to a sick old woman in Nigeria. We have telemedicine, we have other forms of how we can engage in education, in trade advisory, in mentoring, and other forms of giving back to the continent that we can all do um, without having to leave where we are. And for the countries, our countries of residence, if we have African diaspora ministries, ministries and agencies that are dedicated to actually addressing remittances, diaspora bonds, trade promotion and investment promotion, knowledge transfer and technology sharing, and also brain circulation. Then creating policy incentives like tax incentives to, to incentivize um, uh, diaspora uh, investments becomes much easier because you can create continental strategies. John, we're talking about bringing knowledge into Africa but you actually have some experience in bringing African knowledge to your businesses in the U.S. Can you give us an example? I'll give you an example in technology. We have uh, lots of engineers, for instance, in Nigeria that do amazing work. They understand a lot about how to build technology for mobile devices because it's just native to them. A lot of them consume technology on mobile devices all the time. In other parts of the world, maybe broadband is more widely available and you have laptops and you have all these things, so there are more resources. But engineers on the African continent, they, they have to do a lot more with less. So what we have found is they're building elegant, advanced technology on mobile devices that we're learning from them and sharing with our engineers globally and then delivering those solutions for our clients all over the world. And our clients are stunned at the quality of the engineering and they're saying, how in the world did you figure this out? How did you learn how to do this? Guess what? That know-how, that savvy, that expertise came from Africa, you know, and it's benefiting the world and it's enhancing our ability to deliver digital technology to empower the delivery of higher quality care. So this is not about going to Africa and just getting a return. The reality is the rest of the world is getting a return from the talent that's coming out of Africa <laughs> that is fantastic. As you look towards the future, how do you see diaspora investment changing Africa? How would you see Africa different 10 years, 20 years from now because of diaspora investment? Almas, if you can go ahead, I would love to hear your thoughts. The diaspora is going to be a pivotal to the future of Africa simply because of what we're talking about right here because of the Johns that are actually saying, I'm 100% American and 100% African, and I'm going to invest in Africa. That is the future of Africa. Kevin is going to be our eye 
Africa Development Bank can play the biggest role possible to mobilize the diaspora. What are we doing? If this is for the continent, why are we always asking for people who don't look like us to invest in us? What about if we invest in each other to give us an infrastructure or an ecosystem that will enable us to continue to send people to invest in the continent? We can do this, but we do need a, a, an enabling ecosystem. And I'm sorry, Kevin, but I am looking at you. And John, I'm just going to tell you this. You inspire me. Thank you. You're doing it in a big way. And I do really look to working with you and making sure that our community don't look for other people, but they can look to people who look like them doing some amazing things. So, Kevin, you have some marching orders from Almaz. What do you think of those? I think that Almaz always is amazing completely in every way. Her vision for Africa is is very, very contagious. The African Union and the African Development Bank is working with partners to create an African diaspora strategy that will help to outline clearly what the roadmap is for Africans at the diasporans. And one of the things we are trying to do is to play that role of bringing all the diaspora and friends of Africa uh, together in this global Africa summit. And that will be, for me, a melting pot where we will begin to change the narratives, change the governance systems, create that environment that will allow us as African diasporans to feel comfortable to invest more. I would also want to see this one, not 10 years, but within the next year, this 2023, to have that functional African diaspora strategy that has been contributed to by all the Africans everywhere so that we can have a clear instrument that guides the work of the African Union, the African Development Bank, ACFTA, and the diaspora organizations as well with regard to having a coordinated strategy. Then I also want to see that African countries will already have that institutional anchor the ministries of the diaspora, the agencies of the diaspora. And then I want to see uh, the investments by the African diasporans, this time not remittances only, but the investments by the African di diasporans becoming very so well structured that every investor will be falling head over heels to come and invest in Africa. We can fast track the development of the continent. And for me, the answer lies in the diaspora. John, last, last thoughts. How do you see that diaspora investment is going to change Africa? If you look forward 10, 20 years from now. That Africa already leads the world in leapfrogging technologies to embrace new and viable and scalable solutions that work. An example is the success in mobile technology. So we're not looking for examples that don't exist. It exists already. And I want to see a lot more people like us <clears throat> investing on the continent to great success and then have Africa be a destination that any young person in the world or anyone in the world wants to go for tourism, for healthcare, for education, for experience, to go spend time. I'm envisioning a place where Africa is a place where people can live, work, play, and have high quali quality lives and that Africa is contributing in a significant way to the advancement of humanity in all the spheres that matters to all of us. That brings us to the end of our program. Thank you so much to my guests, John Olajide, CEO of Access and Vice Chair of the Corporate Council on Africa, Kevin Aroma, Vice President and Acting Chief Economist at the African Development Bank, and Almaz Nagash, Founder and Executive Director of the African Diaspora Network. To our viewers in Africa, America, and around the world, thank you so much for joining us. I'm Carol Pinot, host and producer of Africa USA Now. Production by Kellen Cody and Nikki Abin. Associate producers, Alessandra Salase and Alicia Gupta. Editing by Betsy Freddy. Graphics by Blessing Ketzadzira. Africa USA Now is presented by the World Trade Center, Washington, D.C. You can find us on YouTube and your favorite podcast apps. Be sure to follow us and leave a review. A special thanks to the Africa Investment Forum for their support. Africa's investment marketplace is championed by the African Development Bank and its partners to accelerate the closure of the continent's investment gaps. 
Our production partners are Africa Global Schaefer and Pixie Corner. For more information on Africa USA Now, visit us at africausanow.com. We hope you've enjoyed the program and that you'll continue to tune in as we delve further into the intersection of Africa and the United States.